I mean, we knew there was a seismic gap in the area, and we know that um, the area of Marsh and the area of, of, of South Turkey is very seismic. However, um, this was a, a very, very large event, and in fact, the first earthquake, 7.8, triggered the 7.5 earthquake on a different fault, on the on the East Anatolia fault. Um, so what we have here is a situation where you have one very large earthquake, which in itself is devastating, or could be devastating, followed in sequence very shortly by another extremely large earthquake earthquake. Um, so um, this is not a common event and I don't think it's something that we think about. It's definitely not something we think about within a design um, setting for a seismic design. It, it's, it's not surprising that a large earthquake would cause so much damage. So a comparison can be, can be drawn possibly with say the 1994 Northridge earthquake that happened on the San Andreas Fault in California um, and that caused massive damage to uh, infrastructure bridges, roads and, and buildings. But that was only a 6.7 magnitude and that is um, a much, much lower level of energy release than, than the 7.8, um, which is at least 30 times more in terms of energy release. Um, so, you know, we can expect these large earthquakes to cause a lot of damage, but that's why we need to be prepared. It takes a very long time for the energy to accumulate to create such large earthquakes. Um, if the energy can be released in a number of ways, there's a number of very small earthquake events, mm -hmm. uh, which don't cause a lot of ground shaking, but are releasing energy constantly and you know many times a year, or they can accumulate, the, the plates are essentially locked together mm -hmm. and um, continuing to stress until the moment when they break. Mm -hmm. When they break, they uh, release all of their energy. Um, and in this case, it takes a long time to accumulate the sort of energy you need to generate a 7.8 mm -hmm. magnitude earthquake. So 500 years is normal for such large events. No, we can't mm -hmm. estimate anything regarding the next death. It's not certain that the next 7.8 will happen in 500 years time. Mm -hmm. We now have movement happening at the faults as the faults sort of re-establish themselves in balance. And, and we see that movement in the form of these aftershocks. Mm -hmm. So that initial rip happened and now there's a tearing, small tearing of, of the faults. And so the aftershocks will be happening over a number of weeks, if not months, mm -hmm. um, hopefully reducing in size over time.